is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning and welcome to today's formal meeting of the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors. Um, Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Thank you. Good Thank you. Good morning. Supervisor Sellers. Here. Supervisor Galvin. Here. Supervisor Hickman. Here, finally. Supervisor Gallardo. <laughs> Here. Chairman Gates. Here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we are. We will now start the meeting with uh, the same way as we always do, with the prayer and the pledge, and very pleased uh, that Supervisor Gallardo has a guest for us today, and uh, if you wouldn't mind introducing our guest. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and yes, we have uh, with us Carmen Heredia. She is the CEO of Via del Sol. She's here to, to start us off with the invocation and pledge, and Afterwards, I'd like to say a few words, if that's okay. Sounds great. Please rise if you, if you can. Thank you, Chairman. Our dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be here in the great state of Arizona, and especially in Maricopa County. I would like to ask a blessing upon our supervisors, their families, and everything that they do, that they may be able to make prudent decisions and be strengthened through them. We also ask for blessings for our county manager, elected officials, the department directors, and county staff. In a county governance system, our board of supervisors holds awesome power. Power to allocate resources, appoint representatives, decide district and precinct boundaries, and determine the welfare of the homeless, the, power, the poor, and the disenfranchised. Our county leaders and its public health department led through unprecedented circumstances, saving lives through action and community collaboration. We are so grateful today for their wisdom and their leadership. We are grateful for the integrity of our supervisors in upholding election results against pressures they faced. We pray that this upcoming election will go well and that strife will remain at bay. May our leaders always advocate for peace love, and the inclusion of all people and their voice in the democratic process. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. If you will join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. Appreciate you joining us this morning. Now I'll turn it to Supervisor Gallardo. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, so thank you, Carmen, for being here. I know you uh, you're extremely busy, so the idea of being able to take some time off to come down here and start our meeting, um, the uh, the thought of um, uh, the beginning of technically tomorrow, Hispanic Heritage Month, we wanted to identify and invite. Um, a couple of folks that were um, very involved in the Hispanic community and really providing uh, a support and services and couldn't think of anyone more than, than Carmen. She leads the uh, Valle del Sol, which is a, a very large um, social service organization. And it's right now in the beginning, I was like, what's your, I mean, Valle del Sol is involved in so many different areas of, of programs and services, but uh, definitely, I knew healthcare was right there. Um, healthcare, providing healthcare to to many folks within the Latino community, uh, specifically around uh, behavioral health, uh, substance abuse type tra uh, programs. Uh, they have just been a pillar within our community. Uh, how long have you all been around? How long? Fifty-two years. Fifty-two years. I knew it was a long time. Fifty-two years of just great service to our community. So. Uh, to kick off Hispanic Heritage Month here in Maricopa County. Um, thank you, Carmen, for coming down and being part of today's board meeting. And I also was introduced to her father. I didn't know her father worked at Maricopa County. Jorge, so stand up. Jorge, Jorge has been with, with the Sheriff's Office for 23 years, 23 years. Um, I didn't even know he worked at Maricopa County. Shame on me. But thank you for coming. This is his first board meeting, right? Is this your first board meeting, attending? 
Yes. Yeah, yeah, Sue, so come, come down more often. We, we're fun down here. <laughs> but this is his first board meeting. He's, it looks like he may retire uh, in, the, in the near future, but nonetheless, thank you, Carmen. Thank you, Jorge, for being here and starting us off. Uh, really, Hispanic Heritage Month right here in Maricopa County. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Supervisor Gallardo, and welcome to you both. Okay, next we will uh, go to another item we always have during our formal meetings of the board, and that's when we get to visit with our friends over at Maricopa County Animal Care and Control. And I think we have Kim with us. Thank you. Yes, good morning. How are you? Great. How are you doing, Kim? Great. I've been in an office with a dog all morning, so I can't complain. Uh, this is Blaze. She is a one-year-old American Pit Bull Terrier. Uh, so she's still pretty young, but she got into our shelter as a stray about a month ago, so August 19th. And at first she was really scared. Uh, she was shy. Obviously the shelter environment is pretty overwhelming. Uh, but we noticed that when you get her out of her kennel, she is a totally different dog, and she loves to play. I don't know if you can see her toy behind me. And now she's curious because I'm talking loudly. <laughs> but um she loves to play when she's out of her kennel she loves doing zoomies and i've noticed in the last half hour she loves to cuddle and give kisses too so Aww. it would be really great again <laughs> she's been here uh for about a month so it'd be really great if we could get her out of the shelter environment um and into a home where she can do all the zoomies her heart desires well wonderful blaze is a great great looking dog and uh i hope we can <laughs> find a home for her real soon so, well, Kim, yeah, me too. Okay. yeah, well, thanks for joining us. Great to see you. Great to see Blaze. And as always, thanks so much for all you guys do over there at uh, Animal Care and Control. Thank you. All right. Uh, Madam Clerk, do we have any corrections or announcements? Chairman, Supervisors, I have one announcement. Item number 48 is an IGA with City of Mesa that is on page 20. That item is being continued to the September 28th meeting per the department's request. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you so much. Do appreciate that. All right. Our next item, uh, and we got a little teaser on this from Supervisor Gallardo just a moment ago. Uh, next item is the Hispanic Heritage Month Proclamation. Madam Clerk, can you please read that proclamation for us? Thank you. Whereas the observation of Hispanic Heritage Week began in 1968 under President Lyndon B. Johnson and expanded to a month in 1988 under President Ronald Reagan. And whereas Hispanic Heritage Month begins on September 15th across the United States as a tribute to the anniversaries of national independence for a number of Latin American countries. And whereas throughout the year and especially during Hispanic Heritage Month, U.S. citizens recognize the contributions and influence of Hispanic traditions. And whereas the Hispanic population has grown to more than 63 million across the United States. And whereas Maricopa County is made up of a diverse population, including more than 1.3 million Hispanic residents. And whereas the Latino population is the fastest growing minority population in the United States and accounts for 51% of the nation's population growth, according to Pew Research. And whereas Latinos are the fastest growing group of small business owners and entrepreneurs in the United States, according to Stanford University. Now, therefore, the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors does hereby proclaim September 15th through October 15th of 2022 as Hispanic, Hispanic Heritage Month in Maricopa County. During this time, we celebrate the contributions that Hispanic people have made to Maricopa County. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, so much, Madam Clerk. And with that, I, uh, the board will consider item number five. Mr. Chairman, uh, first, thank you, Juanita, for reading that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move that we approve item number five, Proclamation on Hispanic Heritage Month. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, I wholeheartedly second that. Thank you very much, uh, Supervisor Gallardo and Supervisor Galvin. Uh, thrilled to see this item. Uh, on to to have it on the agenda and uh, some great actually some some wonderful statistics there in the proclamation too and uh, 
so proud of our diversity here in Maricopa County, and it truly is, truly is our strength. Any other uh, comments? Uh, from my colleagues? <coughs> yeah, Mr. Supervisor Chairman, Gallardo. Real, yeah, real quickly, um, once again, thank you for putting this proclamation on the agenda. Thank you, Juanita and her staff for helping uh, create this. I think Fields had a part of it as well in creating this proclamation. But um, this is a time in which um, many throughout uh, not only Arizona, but across the country really celebrate the accomplishments of the Hispanic community, uh, not only economically, politically. Um, I remember growing up, I, I was originated at Tolleson when I was real knee high. My family moved out into Maryville with a new, a new community being <laughs> developed by John F. Long. And, um, and I was born and raised out there and I, I have seen the change of demographics out in Maryville. Um, it is still home. It is, is grew up in the playgrounds. It'll always be home. I will never leave. Um, uh, it's, it's just, I call it Maryville home all the time. Um, but even attending schools, um, um, the school probably, even the elementary school, even high school, Trevor Brown, probably maybe 20% Hispanic. Um, and we have seen the demographics just change. The Latino community, the Hispanic community just blossom and just grown by leaps and bounds. Uh, now, uh, if you were to walk onto a campus um, anywhere in Maryville, you would see probably a school district with 90% to 95% Hispanic students. Um, the community is just growing, uh, particularly out here in the Southwest. Um, and it's just it's great. I'm, you know, you see more and more uh, Hispanics become small business owners, venturing out in the legal field, every aspect of our economy, they are there. Uh, and a good part of right here in our workforce, uh, folks within the Hispanic community. So it's a good time to come, celebrate the heritage, celebrate um, with uh, folks from all walks of life, uh, be able to uh, enjoy conversation and really recognize the contributions that many folks in the Hispanic community have made. There's a lot of, a lot of folks way before me that led, uh, uh, led us in, uh, led me into politics. Ed Pastor was probably my biggest mentor. He was the one that helped me out politically. Uh, he was the one that when I decided I was going to run for the legislature, he took me under his wing and. Uh, even his campaign headquarters, he gave me a little office within his campaign headquarters when I first started my campaigning. But he, you know, it's folks like Ed Pastor, and Supervisor Wilcox, and and uh, there's a whole slew of folks, I don't want to start naming them, there's a whole slew of folks that, that have started the creation of Valle del Sol, uh, Chicanos por la Casa, one of the largest nonprofit social service organizations in the country. All this uh, great leadership and it's great to have a month where we can just celebrate that and thank them for their service to our community. So with that, Mr. Chairman, thank you for putting this on and uh, let's have a fun month. Wonderful, very well said. Supervisor Galvin. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, I'll be brief. You know, I was telling my mother this morning about this, what we'll be doing today. And my mother was immigrated from Honduras. She came here in the 1960s. I'm very proud of my mother's immigration story, but I think this proclamation is a reflection of how Maricopa County is enriched um, by people who have come here and stro strived and fought and struggled and scraped, but they represent the best of America. Um, my maternal relatives are all in Honduras, so I know very well when they celebrate Independence Day, which was cited as the reason why um, Lyndon Johnson created the week, which is now a month, but also what Supervisor Gallardo says, all the tremendous accomplishments by the Latino community here in Maricopa County, it's quite impressive, it's quite incredible. And there are new generation of Latino leaders who are rising up who will make Maricopa County great for generations to come. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you so much, everyone. Next, under planning and zoning hearings, consent agenda number six, seasons at Riverside Tract A and Well Site 10. Madam Clerk, do we have any registered speakers or comments on item six? Chairman, none were received on item six. Okay, the board will now consider item six. Uh, Mr. Chairman, move for approval, item number six. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Sellers. Motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. 
Under statutory hearings, clerk of the board, we have impact statement hearing for the proposed Medlock Place Irrigation Water Delivery District. Madam Clerk, do we have any registered speakers or comments on item seven? Chairman, yes, we do have regi registered speakers. We have one speaker form from Richard Montjoy in favor, and he is representing the Metlock Place Organizing Committee. We have a speaker form in opposition from Rob Risley, Pat Mahoney, and Joan Mason. They are here to speak in opposition, and we have one comment only in opposition from Karen Steigers. Okay, and it's, but it's just a comment from Karen? Just a comment. Email. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's been provided to all the offices, correct. correct? Okay, perfect. Well, then let's have the, the gentleman in support then, uh, if you would like to join us uh, and provide comments. Yes, please, if you'll come up here to the podium and uh, state your name for the record. Thank you. Good morning, Supervisors. My name is Rick Mountjoy. I'm a member of the uh, Medlock Place Irrigation District Organizing Committee. Uh, we've been working on uh, this district formation for the better part of, of this year. Um, I believe that this is the oldest suburban irrigated residential district in the Phoenix metro area. It was formed in 1926. Um, there's so many other surrounding areas that have districts, but for perhaps uh, the reason that the uh, system was set up so well that uh, the maintenance has been reasonable um, up to recently in most areas. But specifically to the, um, to the impact statement, uh, we've looked very carefully at, at um, our expenses uh, the expenses that our volunteers have incurred over the last few years, as well as expenses incurred by neighboring districts of similar lot size and age. And we, we've set the um, estimated uh, tax of $340 per acre per year based upon that. Uh, it's about an average rate, and we, we think that it will be a good start uh, for the district. Um, we have... Uh, four, sometimes five neighborhood volunteers, some of which who have been volunteering to collect uh, fees and, and bills and manage the district for 25, 30 years. All of these individuals are supportive of this new district. And I'm here representing them as well as the committee. Um, the committee has also very carefully examined the, the, the statutes and rules created by the state legislature for these irrigation water districts. Uh, we understand the, the duties, the responsibilities, and the rights, not only of the district, but of the, of the trustees and the governance structure uh, of this district. And while it's, it may not be a perfect arrangement, we, we do believe it is a great step forward in putting our system under a sound footing um, and allowing um, a fair and open selection of, of trustees and some mechanism for replacement of those trustees. We have some volunteers, I said, that are um, becoming aged and no longer wish to do it, and uh, we, we need to set something up for the future. And this is, uh, this is our motivation for establishing the district. All right, thank you um, so much. Any questions from my colleagues? Um, Rick, I just had a question for you. So you said, was it 300 and you estimated it'd be about $340 per acre? Per acre per year. And what would you say is the average lot size? Well, mathematically, it, it's, it's about a quarter acre. So it's about yeah. $90 a year, uh, which is pretty reasonable, we think. Um, the, the lots range in size from about uh, just under 10,000 square feet uh, up to, I think, around 17,000, 18,000 square feet. So there is, there's a very variation in lot size, but mathematically it averages to a quarter acre, which is what we had to have to report on the impact statement. Okay. Yeah. And just want to make sure everyone who's listening understands what we're being asked to do here today as a board is to approve the impact statement. Right, and then the impact statement 
goes onto the petition, and then the petition, you have to go circulate them. Correct. That's your understanding. Okay. <clears throat> just want to make sure that we're all on the same page here. Okay, great. We may call you up with additional questions, but thanks so much. Uh, thanks for, uh, for your presentation. Thanks for your time. You bet. So, Madam Clerk, if we want to um, go ahead and, and we'll invite up the people speaking in opposition. Rob Reesley in opposition. Mr. Reesley, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Chairman Gates, Board of Supervisors. Uh, it's Rob Risley, R-I-S-L-E-Y. Um, five minutes, two minutes? Uh, let's, yeah, let's, I mean, I, I'm not turning the clock on, but okay. let's use reason. <laughs> I may at some point I'll reserve the right to step in. Um, I provided you a detailed and lengthy statement expressing my concerns about the neighborhood IWDD proposal. I'll not repeat my arguments here but you should feel free to interrupt me if you have questions in that regard. I very much appreciate the supervisor's vigilance and caution when imposing new taxes. Maricopa County has the lowest tax rate of any U.S. jurisdiction that I've lived in, and in my view, the most efficient government operations, local government operations I've ever experienced. The IWDD proposal before you now is not made in the same spirit a vigilance, caution, or respect for good principles of government that the board has used in the past. The project was conceived and pulled together in a series of private, non-transparent meetings of a small group of invited neighbors without notice to me or many of my other neighbors. During these private meetings, the structure of the IWDD was adopted and approved the problematic boundaries of the IWDD were drawn and adopted, and the impact statement was written and, in their words, all but finalized. It came as a huge surprise to me and most of my neighbors that this project was even underway when, last April 23rd, the organizing committee announced the project and invited the neighborhood to an informal meeting on April 28th, three business days later. I asked that the meeting be postponed. My request was refused. In the discussions that followed, certain members of the organizing committee distributed substantial misinformation regarding the project and summarily refused or refuted my protests. Neither the organizing committee nor the neighborhood association have allowed me to address our neighbors in real life with my concerns. Organizing committee members have failed to inform the neighborhood of the sweeping powers they accede to as trustees. Among these, the power of eminent domain, the power to require a property owner to upgrade facilities on his or her property at her own expense, their power to borrow secured by a first priority tax lien on my property, and the power to impose additional fees. Among the misinformation are claims that the IWDD will create a cost savings, that Maricopa County will not charge the IWDD for the services it performs, that the IWDD will avoid the cost of an expensive, excuse me, expensive professional audit, and that the IWDD does not create a further point of liability for the neighborhood. The organizing committee has gerrymandered the IWDD boundaries in an arbitrary and capricious way to tax unpopular non-irrigated properties while excluding similarly situated non-irrigated properties, which because of their size could be prevent voter approval of the district. The impact statement, if you'll look at it, is a superficial and biased document that does not begin to raise or address the potential adverse effects or the adverse impact of the IWDD. I believe that the IWDD organizers are honest and sincere and have the better interests of the neighborhood in mind. Unfortunately, as currently self-constituted, I believe the organizing committee lacks the technical legal background to understand IWDD impacts. From some of the claims that, I, that I've seen made, I sometimes wonder whether 
Many on the organizing committee have even read or understood the applicable statutes. An IWDD with fair and equitable boundaries and with charter safeguards against power abuses, such as the abusive power of eminent domain, may or may not be in our neighborhood's best interests. I su suggest to the chairman and the board that this effort would benefit greatly by being remanded back to the organizing committee for first, work within a transparent, inclusive, and equitable environment, and secondly, to prepare a detailed and balanced impact study that will fully inform neighbors of the true nature of the IWDD and its sweeping powers. I've seen nothing in the impact statement or heard nothing from the organizing committee that demands that this district be organized in the next several months. I think we have time to do this. Obviously, I have many differences of opinion with the organizing committee. We have one great commonality, the best interests of our neighborhood. If remanded, and if I'm given the opportunity to contribute to this project, I pledge to Chairman Gates and the supervisors that I will work cooperatively, professionally, and respectfully with my neighbors to reach an appropriate solution in a transparent, inclusive, and equitable way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions from my colleagues? Okay, thank you. Uh, next speaker. Next speaker is Pat Mahoney in opposition. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Gates and the board. Uh, I'm Pat Mahoney. I'm uh, a native and I have some office buildings at uh, 5202 and 5210 North Central. There's a, in this district that has been, come together, uh, there's probably eight commercial properties that are involved in this. And uh, this is a residential district. And uh, my request, I, you know, I, I, I don't want to sound like a hypocrite, but I, I do have uh, just North Central and Glendale. I'm in an irrigation, not a district, but we have irrigation. So I'm much in favor of irrigation for residential. Uh, what I'm not in favor is that we're being brought into this district. Uh, we don't get irrigation. Um, and they've kind of, as Rob said, more eloquently than I can. Uh, we, we were included in this district. We don't have a seat at the table when these district boundaries were formed. And they do kind of gerrymander around. And some of commercial properties are in, some are out. And we, we don't get any benefits from the irrigation. Uh, the argument that I was told from SRP and from the committee that's organized this is that uh, this was an SRP easement, you know, and that they have the rights to do this. And they're just, they want the, where the irrigation lines are running to the, those properties be in the district. However, um, that's, that's an inconsistent comment because I don't know if you can see this, but here's all, this is Missouri Avenue. Here's the irrigation line in red. Here's Central Avenue. Here's all ours. These properties are out. So how can they be out of this district? They don't receive irrigation, but they're out. Uh, my hunch, and this is purely speculative, is that there are um, townhomes and multifamily that they're probably not gonna be in support of this uh, district. Um, so they've included us in the deal. And it's, it's really not about a financial issue. It's more about a governmental. This is giving this district a quasi oversight on uh, taxing our land, eminent domain, as was mentioned. And I just don't, I, I feel like we're not a benefactor of this irrigation district. I've made a proposal to them that, hey, I think I could get these eight commercial property owners and we might be willing to contribute to this thing. We just don't want to be involved with this quasi-governmental overreach of being in this district when we have no benefits or, you know, we, we have lines under our, under our property. And frankly, I'm a little bit uh, suspect after the meeting last night that they had, I went back to my office and looked at the, I have a 2002, I bought the properties in 99 uh, survey and it doesn't have, I think the, these, these lines 
technically, and I don't know, but I, they're not showing on my survey. So I'm assuming it may, might be in the right of ways. But I do have a 1931 uh, SRP easement that you can barely read that says they have rights to, you know, have the uh, over our property. And that's been there since the 30s. I'm not arguing about that. I, I'm just saying we, were, we didn't have a seat at the table when these boundaries were formed. We're being included and we get no benefit. And I would just like to request that they, maybe we have a 60 to 90 day meeting. I requested that last night, a delay, and that where the district organizers and the commercial properties owners uh, could maybe have a sit down with SRP and really get to the gist, because I'm getting one comment from SRP and I'm getting another story from the organizers. And it impacts our properties where we're going to give, uh, you know, intimate domain and other governmental lien rights to our property for no benefit. I, I don't find, I don't find that to be acceptable, but I do, you know, I'm conflicted because I do think irrigation is, you know, a amenity that is not in a lot of neighborhoods. So I, I don't want to propose, you know, oppose them for having irrigation. I just don't like the district format and what it does to us that are not involved in it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions? Yeah, any questions from my colleagues? No, thank you for the information. Very helpful. Um, other speakers? Joan Mason in opposition. Okay, Joan Mason, thank you for joining us. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, I was very taken aback when I received this notice coming back from vacation about the creation of this uh, new irrigation water uh, delivery district. Um, I was taken aback because I thought it was pretty well acknowledged that here in the Southwest in Arizona and in our county that we have a water shortage where we've just declared a water shortage. And I think that we should be doing things to encourage saving water rather than consuming more water. Um, it's the um, irrigation, um, the water that we take from the SRP every year is between 60,000 and 80,000 acre feet, and that's annually. And I really believe that we could be encouraging better solutions, more low water solutions. I don't think it's in our state's best interest to be encouraging more irrigation rather than less. We can have green landscapes without endless grass, without um, non-native trees. Medlock really is no longer, if you look around, it's no longer a neighbor, neighborhood of oleanders and pine trees. It's not what it was when I moved in and bought my house in 1989. It's changed and it's changing and it should change. Um, it shouldn't be that old neighborhood that's, that's continually soaked with water that we could be using in better ways. So I, I think that um, it will have a big impact on the environment. This is maybe a lar larger uh, impact, but I believe it would have an impact on the environment uh, to encourage irrigation, whereas we should be going in the other direction. I mean, I believe the city or the county should be offering rebates or some facilitations, encouragement of people, for people to stop irrigation, to go to low water use uh, plants. And we can still have beautiful landscapes, but they could be more environmentally sound. Um, to speak from my own, uh, the impact on me, I believe it's a fairness issue. Over 20 years ago, I invested, <coughs> excuse me, in desert landscaping, low water use plants, so that I could not use so much water. I stopped irrigating that I had used previously and decided that it was my duty not to um, keep consuming so much water. Um, and so, um, but I will be assessed because I have maybe, I think it's less than a third of an anchor, but I'll be assessed $100 a year. I know it's negligible, but it's for something that I really strongly oppose. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Any questions from my co colleagues? All right, very helpful, uh, very timely comments. We've been uh, dealing with water a lot around here recently. Um, any other uh, speakers? Chairman, I have no other speakers. 
Okay. Well, I want to thank everyone who came uh, today to speak. I want to thank all the organizers and the, the, the time that they've put into this, as well as the people who have concerns about the the current wording of the impact statement and sort of the process as it has moved forward so far. Um, this is an important issue. Uh, you know, we see these, we see a fair m amount of these, and I do think it's kind of unfair for people to be doing this voluntarily and taking on, you know, a, a, an excessive burden uh, within a community, but at the same time, I wanna make sure that everyone feels heard and that their concerns are addressed and that it is truly a impact statement that can uh, comply with our responsibility, which is to determine whether the creation of the district will promote public health comfort, convenience, necessity, or welfare. So I think at this point we would all benefit from a little bit more discussion um, between the, the organizers and those who have these concerns. Um, but I don't want to just leave this open forever. I, I, I do would like to, would like to bring it to a head here fairly soon. So uh, if any of my colleagues is the chair, I can't really make a make a motion myself. But maybe if one of my colleagues would care to to make a motion that kind of uh, expresses uh, my the, <laughs> the comments that I've just made, that would be great. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, going back. Uh from so many years on the board, um, you know, it's tough when there's something in your district, but you're chairman at the same time, because we, we need to look for other colleagues for motions or continuances of, of continuances, motions to approve or deny. We're banging up against the, our ministerial duties. You know, uh, if you ever watch these things, when, when we have irrigation districts come up, um, you know, we all talk about, well, this is kind of our ministerial duty. There's a, set, there's a certain segment of residents that want to get this done for infrastructure. Um, but I, I don't know if I've ever heard ever um, in all my time where the map or the impact is also pulling in um, commercial uh, buildings. You, usually it's to mm -hmm. mature neighborhoods and you have residents that want a zero escape and don't want to pay for new. So, so that I, I, I hear both sides. So I'm just going to suggest um, uh, after hearing your statement, I think, I think some more dialogue needs to occur. And I'm wondering um, if I have a colleague that would support a continuance uh, to our next meeting of this issue. Uh, and I believe our next meeting is uh, October 19th. Our next formal meeting is September 28th. Oh, it's September. Well, then, the okay, the 19th will be a month. So I thought, I didn't know if we had one in between here. So um, I would uh, uh, make a motion to continue this item to the 1019 to afford time for, uh, for residents to speak. I'll, sec would, I'll second that motion, Mr. Chairman. I mean, the first step in... I'm a strong believer the first step in resolving uh, any dispute or concerns is just a dialogue, sitting down, talking, and reaching out uh, with both parties, including SRP. SRP has to be part of that discussion as well. Uh, but yes, I will second that motion. Uh, having an open dialogue discussion is always good. So okay. I agree. Wonderful. Well, thank you for the motion in the second. And I just want the folks to know, um, would, you, would you like to make a brief comment? or? Oh, okay. So bump it to the next one. I, I can't make it. Okay. If you if you're okay with that, then thank you very much for letting us know. And just because you didn't get within the microphone, just so folks know who's who are watching, maybe if you could just state that for the record. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, Richard Mountjoy. I'm with the committee. I will be out of town, out of state, actually, um, the last half of this month. So we need to push it back further. Mr. Chairman, I would like to make a substitute motion that we move. Uh, make, do you want me to make the original motion? Oh, you can go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. You can make a substitute okay motion just second. to move it to the yeah. second. Yeah, I, I will amend my motion and uh, amend that date to November 2nd um, after hearing from the resident. Um, so number November 2nd. Second. Okay, thank you. No, thank you very much. Appreciate you coming up and letting us know that. Thanks for, for your willingness to work with us. Mm -hmm. November 2nd. Wonderful. We have the motion, the second. Any other discussion? 
Uh, Mr. Yes, Chairman, Supervisor Galvin. Echoed the comments that were made and, and a great suggestion by you. I'm a big fan of outreach, dialogue, bilateral discussion. So I look forward to hearing how those work out. Great. Thank you, Supervisor Galvin. And, and I want you all to know who've come down here, we're not going to just, you know, throw you out there. We're happy to help in our district to the extent that we can help convene or help those communications. Please do not hesitate to reach out to us and we will certainly be checking in. So we're not just here on November 2nd saying, well, what happened, guys? Um, so again, thank you for your time. We know everyone's busy and your time is valuable. Uh, so with that, we have a motion to continue until November 2nd. And a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thanks again to everyone who came down today. Our next items, uh, statutory hearings continued, clerk of the board eight, bingo license application for Super Sun Bingo, nine, road de-annexation from City of Phoenix. Madam Clerk, do we have any registered speakers or comments on items eight and nine? Chairman, none were received for items eight and nine. All right, thank you very much. The board will now consider items eight and nine. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve items eight and nine. Thank you, Supervisor Galvin. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Sellers. Motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Under statutory hearings, continued transportation. 10, road file declarations. Road file number A710, road file number A708. 11, addition to Granite Vista Phase 1D Street Light Improvement, Lighting Improvement District. Madam Clerk, do we have any uh, registered speakers or comments on items 9 and 10? Chairman, we have none for items 10 and 11. Okay, I'm sorry, it says not, yeah, 10 and 11, you're right. Okay, uh, the board will now consider items 10 and 11. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve items 10 and 11. Thank you, Supervisor Galvin. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Sellers. Motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Uh, under County Officers, Board of Supervisors 12, resignation of Carolyn Lane Constable, Arcadia Biltmore Justice Precinct, 13 through 19, reappointments as listed on the agenda. The Board will now consider items 12 through 19. Mr. Chairman, I would uh, uh, make a motion to approve items 12 through 19. I'd just like to make a real quick comment. Yes, thank you. Do we have a second? Second. I'd like to make a quick comment afterwards as well. Thank please. you as well. First, Supervisor Gallardo. Thank you. Just real quickly, we, we might be uh, refer making reference to the same issues, but item 12, uh, Carolyn Lane, I know it's, whose district is it? Yours or one of you, yeah, share it or something? Might, yeah. You share it, okay. Share. You know, so I did, I did get contacted a while back about this, and, and um, you know, these constables are, are under a lot of pressure and looking at what has happened over the last month or so, uh, particularly out in, uh, in, in Pima County where the constable lost their lives. Um, and, and, you know, the reason, it's too dangerous. I mean, that's, that's the reason. Um, but that's unfortunate. Just thank Carolyn for her service and uh, appreciate her work she has done in the Arcadia Biltmore area, which you all represent. Mm -hmm. But I know her well and just want to say thank you for her service. And I understand why she has decided to step down. Supervisor Galvin. Uh, thank you for that. But I want to talk about item number 17 because mm -hmm. District 2 um, is pleased to, for the reappointment of Marshall Hunt and Kevin Metema for the Community Development Advisory Committee, which does great things involving our development block grants. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> so, well, uh, Vice Chairman. Um, I'll, I'll make a comment uh, to uh, Supervisor Gallardo's. Um, yes, there was, it is getting violent and it's, a, it's highly emotional. And uh, I, I do make it a point to talk to the constables in my area. And, and they were addressing with that, uh, that to me, um, you know, four or five months ago. And I told them this board is incredibly um, cognizant of the support, the constables, the deputy constables, uh, and all law enforcement. Um, I, I believe that, that recently our own county attorney started to talk about uh, gun violence in the community. And um, I just want them to know uh, that this, this entire board is looking for ways to 
to keep all of our county workers safe, uh, not just the constables, not just the sheriff's office, and but but everybody. So um, I would appreciate what they come uh, to this. We we cannot afford to lose great people uh, in service to the community, and we cannot afford to lose them due to violence and highly emotional uh, states. So uh, whatever uh, we can do uh, for our deputies and 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 people that we put in harm's way to provide cu uh, customer and community service, um, we're, we're very interested in. So I, sh I share your concern, uh, Supervisor, and I think all of us do. Uh, thank you, Vice Chair Hickman. I would echo the comments that have been made. Um, it is a it is a very difficult time to be out in the community, being any sort of first responder. And this is a, this is a, a constable is a first responder in a very difficult position. We know that evictions, despite our best efforts of this board and many others, that evictions are very high in the community. And in fact, um, Constable Lane and I will be sitting down this afternoon because I wanna talk with uh, Constable Lane, get a better idea of the specifics of the challenges uh, that they're all facing out there and what we can do as a board. So I really do um, thank uh, Constable Lane for her service, but it's uh, but we certainly understand the decision and it will be the responsibility of this board to, to look at filling that position. And I actually have another opening in District 3. We have uh, the Moon Valley Constable as well. So um, this is something the board is focused on and as I think is reflected by the comments of my colleagues. And there'll be an opening in District 2 soon too. Okay, so so again, this, this definitely has our attention in this very important position. Okay, so with that, we do have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? <laughs> motion passes unanimously. Uh, Board of Supervisors continued 20 appoint citizens committee regarding representative vacancy in Legislative District 19. Uh, the board will now consider item 20. Supervisor Gallardo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, let's try to multitask here. I appreciate it. Um, uh, as we all know, um, anytime there's a legislative vacancy, uh, these types of, of appointments include the precinct committeemen with various uh, uh, legislative districts. Uh, Unfortunately, in this particular legislative district, uh, District 19, which is in mine, um, it is a Democrat that has uh, resigned from this legislative uh, seat. And uh, unfortunately, uh, there is not the uh, minimum required precinct commitment in this legislative district. Um, so there's another provision in statute that says when you don't have the required number of precinct commitment, elected precinct commitment, uh, it turns uh, to us to create a citizens uh, committee to review all the applicants. Um, a lot going on out there in legislative uh, 19 and we're watching from afar, but we're gonna fulfill our statutory responsibility and appoint a committee. I have selected a committee that um, is a, a true citizens committee. I mean, it is truly citizens committee. Folks that are longtime residents of, of this uh, legislative district and, and uh, these folks are qualified electors. They, they vote every election. Uh, they may not be as engaged in terms of the precinct committeeman level, but they are solid folks that vote all the time and, and, uh, and are real leaders out there in, in Legislative District 19. So Mr. Chairman, with your permission, I'd like to appoint uh, Francisca Montoya. Uh, who is in the Fowler area, kind of eastern side of the district. Uh, Adam uh, Morado, who is a business owner out there in Tolleson. Uh, Gonzalez uh, Ortiz, who resides in the Cashin area. Uh, Belinda, uh, Belinda uh, Casada, who is uh, no relation to the senator. <laughs> but I just go to, no relation to the senator. Uh, Belinda Casada, uh, who is uh, also in Tolleson and then uh, the mayor of Tolleson, Juan Rodriguez, uh, to be our five members of the citizens panel uh, and would like to also recommend or nominate Francisca Mentoya to be the chair of the citizens panel. Excellent. And I ask for your support. Wonderful. Well, thank you. And I just want to thank you, um, Supervisor Gallardo, for your work on this. 
it's it's always a big job to appoint a state legislator to start with. But in these rare instances, now you've had a couple um, where you don't have enough precinct committee, then you've got to go out, you've got to get this whole group that's reflective of the community. So thank you for your hard work very over a very short period of time to do that. So um, so thank you for walking us through that then. Uh, do we have a motion? Mr. Yes. Mr. Chairman, uh, just real quickly, I do I do have a little bit of District 4. And um, in this in this area too, and and Steve and I talked about it uh, last night, and I would like to applaud his quick work. Um, I was very happy to see. I mean, the mayor of Tolleson. Um, he doesn't know he's being appointed, by the way. <laughs> no, well, no, no, he's, oh, I've got it. I got, my phone's ringing here. Yeah. No, he's a new mayor, <laughs> no, and, and he's going to get a chance to to really meet more people that would represent that. Uh, area to the state. So uh, thank you for for volunteering him, at the, even if he's yet to know that, but I'm sure he's going to serve uh, very well in that position yeah. too, to bring three names to us. So uh, thank you. And I am more than happy to uh, support Supervisor Gallardo's motion. Great. Okay. We have a motion in a second then. Any uh, questions or comments? Just want to congratulate Supervisor Gallardo for a job well done here very quickly and also try to get a broad swath and breadth mm -hmm. of the community, which is really important. And thank you for thinking about that. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Okay. Motion in a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much, Supervisor Gallardo and Vice Chair Hickman. Mm -hmm. Under Clerk of the Board, we have 21 permanent extension of premises patio for Anacapa Grill at Cortabella, 22 and 23, special event license for 16 by 16 Inc. in St. Catherine Greek Orthodox Church. Clerk of the Court, 24 appointments. The Board will now consider items 21 through 24. Move to approve items 21 through 24, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Vice Chair Hickman. Do we have a Sec thank you, Supervisor Sellers. Motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Under County Attorney, we have 25 victims' rights grant funding from the Arizona Attorney General, 26 replacements warrants check enforcement program, 27 sole source procurement with JSI Telecom, 28, amend agreement with Phoenix Children's Hospital. Under the recorder, 29, appointments and oaths of office. The board will now consider items 25 through 29. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 25 through 29. Thank you, Supervisor Sellers. Uh, thank you, Supervisor Galvin, for the second. Motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Under school superintendent, we have the budget adjustment for county school superintendent small school fund. Under the sheriff, 31, competition impracticable with Ron Smith and Associates. 32 through 33, donations. 34, one-time addition to the fleet. The board will now consider items 30 through 34. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 30 through 34. Thank you, Supervisor Sellers. Do you have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Galvin. Motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Under county management, we have Assistant County Manager Leanne Bone. 35, American Rescue Plan Act Expenditure Approval and Budget Adjustments. 36, IGA with ASU for the Broadband Initiative. The board will now consider items 35 and 36. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve items 35 and 36. Thank you, Supervisor Galvin. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we'll give that one to Supervisor Gallardo. Uh, we. Yes. Um, did you have a comment? Okay, sorry. Uh, so I just briefly wanted to, to mention 36, uh, the IGA with ASU for broadband initiative. Um, I really appreciate my colleagues' support on this item. Uh, I've been chairing the broadband uh, committee now for a number of months where we've been working with uh, other cities and towns, ASU, uh, Digital Equity Institute. And this is a very significant investment in broadband, $37 million to broadband. Uh, I couldn't be more excited. Uh, it, during my, my 
times as chair, you know, I've made sort of digitizing the county a priority of mine, and I just could not be more thrilled. Leanne and the whole team and everyone, all the work that has been done, I think this is a game changer. I know, again, all of my colleagues are focused on this. All of, all of them have a passion for this item, and it is about economic development but it's especially it's about the young people in our community and underserved communities, making sure that everyone in this county, regardless whether they're in Aguila, Gila Bend, New River, downtown Phoenix, that they have this access. So again, I just want to thank everybody who's worked on this, and I want to thank my chief of staff, Zach Shearer, for all the work that he has done. He has put a, a ton of time into this. So, Supervisor Gallardo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and uh, thank you for, for, for making those comments. I think this is so critical. Just not too long ago, uh, in the midst, right in the hype of our uh, our COVID situation where schools locked down, I can tell you many of the schools uh, just, I mean, it was all of a sudden, many of them were not prepared to deal with uh, uh, many of their kids learning from home and having access uh, to the internet was huge. It was a big hurdle. Even at Phoenix Union, we have a school district not too far from here. We're talking about Gila Bend and, and, and Aguila and all that. No, we're, we're talking, um, Murphy School District, <laughs> a couple miles down the road here, uh, where a vast majority of their students just did not have access. We ended up having to Phoenix Union park buses throughout the school, the neighborhoods with broadband on the buses and park them there all day. And that's how the kids had access to, to the internet. It's, it's that type of, of, uh, of uh, we take it for granted. I mean, we, we I have a phone and we all have access. We take it for granted, but there's so many families that just don't have access. You have, like as you mentioned, parts of uh, our, our um, I guess our rural por portions of Maricopa County that really do not have access um, currently now. Uh, so this is a great investment. Um, look forward to seeing what comes out of it. This has been a discussion. Even when I was in the legislature, we had this type of discussion. We're talking the Napolitano years and when she was governor having this discussion. So finally, I think you're seeing uh, not only the county, you're seeing the state, the cities, uh, as you stated, um, all coming together along with our universities to really start to look at how we can do this, how can we can fill in those gaps and make sure everyone has access to the broadband. So thank you so much for bringing this forward. Thank you for those comments. And then just two other things. Again, we would not be here if it was not for ASU. Um, they really have, have put an incredible amount of work into this. Dr. Crow personally and Lev Gonick, the CIO with ASU, I'm just blown away by their commitment to this. And then finally, a special um, nod to a person who was a council aide of mine when I was at the city of Phoenix, a man by the name of Dominic Papa, who really has been a leader and has gone from being council aide in my office a few years ago, and he's now heading up uh, the develop the expansion of cloud computing for Amazon Web Services, AWS. So, I mean, it's a remarkable story, and that's another person that has played a key part in all this. So, again, uh, thanks to everyone. We do have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, motion passes unanimously. Thank you so much. Under county offices, air quality 37, prevention of significant deterioration delegation agreement, 38, amend license agreement with the town of Fountain Hills, 39, amend agreement with Maricopa Association of Governments. Under correctional health, 40, agreement with Taros Health. Emergency management, 41, agreement with securing the city's jurisdictional partners. The Excuse me, Chairman. Yes. I'm sorry. We have one speaker request for item number 40, Blue Crawley. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, Blue, you want to come on up? Thanks for joining us today. I was also going to put one in for 39, so I'll cover both of them. On the uh, travel reduction program and such, where is MAG's actual doing such things? When I come in to talk on uh, the uh, public comment, I'll be bringing up uh, parts of that thing you guys submitted to the legislature that really doesn't do what it's supposed to be doing and has so many holes in it. But also, I look at uh, on the travel reduction program, one of the things that it doesn't have is the expansion of the rural routes, you know? Um, one of my favorites is Wickenburg, 
that was taken out, it should have been in. And in the document that you proposed and gave to the legislature, it said, we're gonna do it according to distance and ridership. Well, if you're a rural route, you just got killed. But then the other thing is, is that I'd like to point out is that if they had that now on the 17th, Wickenburg is having their September festival and I would suggest to all of you to make it because it's not just the heritage, it's the history. Back in the 1860s, the population of Wickenburg was 40 to 60% Hispanic and it covers that and such. And I also recommend the three contests of uh, salsa, guacamole, and margarita. <laughs> but then to uh, <coughs> 40, the Taros thing, I'd like to point out that they're also into suicide prevention and have been around for a long time and doing such. And with their um, example, back in the 70s in Grand Rapids, Michigan, we started a thing very much like Taros called Drug Help Flying Squad. And when I got back to Phoenix, with the empathy training I had there. I went to Glendale Community College and was a student teacher. So thank you, Taros, for what you do and uh, keep on. Thank you, Blue. Appreciate the uh, food, food and drink recommendations as well. All right, um, so uh, now we've gotten public comment and the board will consider items uh, 37 through 41. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 37 through 41. Thank you, Supervisor Sellers. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Galvin. Motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Under Equipment Services 42, Vehicle Exemption for Marking and Non-Government License Plates. Under Finance 43, Funds Transfers Warrants. 44, fill the gap. 45, contract with Greater Phoenix Economic Council for Economic Development Activities and under Human Resources. 46, amend premium pay rates. 47, market ranges. The board will now consider items 42 through 47. Excuse me, Chairman. Yes. We have one more speaker form on item 45 from Diane Barker. Okay. Diane, please join us for 45. Good to see you this morning. Yes, good morning. Thank you, Chairman Gates and Board of Supervisors. This is a contract near 700,000 with the nonprofit GPAC, Greater Phoenix Economic Council. And their purpose is to promote a regional business image that is diversified. On item 19, you did approve the different uh, staff or actually officers of GPAC, and I am reminded. Uh, I think you did a good job on 20 there, uh, Supervisor Gallardo, but a couple years ago, you were going to look to see, you know, the promotions of minority persons and looking at the names, it didn't look like there were. And so I'm calling, this is for a year, I'm calling for you to look again so that you can get more diversity of minorities on some of these, even when you represent MAG, because I've gone in there and it's a slow progression to incorporate what I consider is America, Maricopa County. So I am in support of this. I also like the idea when GPACs, I followed the progression of GPAC. It used to be the triangle of power. You know, this greater Phoenix would be, you know, Maricopa County and the area, LA, and uh, Las Vegas, it makes a triangle of business. Now we know also we're, we've got the Sun Corridor. I expect great international trade out of Arizona and the way that this particular contract looks at the foreign trade zones. Thank you very much. Appreciate those comments, Diane. Um, all right, so we have, uh, we, do we get a motion? Okay, all right, so uh, I would, uh, do we have a motion uh, on this on these items, 42 through 47? Motion to approve items 42 through 47, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Vice Chair Hickman. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Supervisor Sellers. Um, and yeah, the one thing for the people at home or the people here, 
we at Maricopa County have, we take our economic development responsibility seriously, um, as opposed to as many of the cities uh, in the Valley, we have chosen not to have our own economic development uh, team. So instead what we do is we contract out with GPEC. Uh, and we have found that that's been a successful approach. Jack and I both currently serve on the board and uh, they, you know, they working together with the other cities uh, and towns in the valley uh, have been able to really, you know, bring together a lot of resources and had great success. And I think that's, you know, we've heard these stories about all the companies that are locating facilities here and GPEC plays a big part in that, as well as GPEC has also partnered with us on some of the broadband activities that we were just talking about earlier. So uh, I'm supportive of this item and I think that it is a, uh, you know, we don't have to do everything in-house at Maricopa County, and uh, we look to experts to partner with, and this is a great example of that. Supervisor Sellers. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I would also add that I'm a member of the GPEC International Leadership Council, which is playing a significant role in attracting foreign direct investment into this area. Thank you for your involvement there, and we've all heard about the many stories of success there, so thank you for your service. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Under Human Services 48, IGA with the City of Mesa for Emergency Rental Assistance. Planning and Development 49, Arroyo Norte Units 8, 9, and 10, Termination of Assurance Agreement. Under Procurement, we have 50, Contract with Caliente Construction, Inc. for Public Health Glendale Remodel. The Board will now consider items I'm 48 through 50, yes. Sorry, just a reminder that item 48 has been continued, so the vote will be on items 49 and 50. Thank you very much for that reminder. We kind of circled it, too, and I didn't <laughs> I circled it, even. Thank you, Juanita. Yes. That's a good job. Uh, I will uh, mo motion to approve uh, 49 through 50, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Second. second. Oh. oh, I think, yeah, Supervisor Galvin got that one. Okay, motion second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously under public health. 51, administrative correction to the IGA with City of Tempe. 52, administrative correction to the amended IGA with Arizona Department of Economic Security. 53 through 55, amend IGAs in agreement with Valleywise, Arizona Department of Health Services, and the St. Mary's Food Bank Alliance. The board will now consider items 51 through 55. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve items 51 through 55. Thank you, Supervisor Galvin. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Vice Chair Hickman. Motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Public health continued 56 and 57, agreement in IGA with Neighborhood Outreach Access to Health in the city of Mesa. 58, increase the maximum threshold on master agreement for community testing services for COVID-19. The board will now consider items 56 through 58. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 56, 57, and 58. Thank you, Supervisor Sellers. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Galvin. Motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Under transportation, 59 through 60, amend bid and award for construction on the Gilbert Road Bridge at Salt River. Roadway widening for Maricopa 85 at 95th Avenue to 87th Avenue. 61 and 62, bid in award for Sun Lakes Rehab Units 11 through 22, Eagle Eye Road at Tiger Wash Improvement Program. 63, IGA with Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian Community. 64, increase to fleet. 65, easement right away and relocation assistance documents. The board will now consider items 59 through 65. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 59 through 65. Thank you for the motion. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you for the second, uh, Supervisor Galvin. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Under setting of hearings, clerk of the board. 66, petitions to form Fillmore Place Irrigation Water Delivery District. 67, uh, planning and development, planning and zoning cases. Transportation, 68. Patent easement abandonment. Road file number PAB-0170. 
69 through 73 road files as listed on the agenda. The board will now consider item 66 through 73. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve item 66 through 73. Thank you, Supervisor Galvin. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Vice Chair Hickman. Motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. On the consent agenda, 74 through 77, cancellation of election and approval appointments to the Board of Directors and Board of Trustees as listed on the agenda. 78 and 79, duplicate stale dated warrants. 80, RICO funds quarterly report. 81, tax abatements. 82, secured unsecured tax roll corrections. The board will now consider items 74 through 82. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 74 through 82. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Do second. second. Thank you, Supervisor Sellers. Motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Now on the next item, item 83, I will need to recuse myself and turn it over to the vice chair. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, now that uh, Chairman Gates has left the dais, um, we will consider item number 83, Settlement Resolution of Property Tax Cases and Claims. Uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Second. Thank you, Supervisor Galvin. I have a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries, and we will invite the Chairman back to the dais. Yeah, I killed it. All right. <laughs> well, thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. Under Board of Supervisors Addendum, Transportation 84, Settlement of Maricopa County versus William D. Hughes et al. Board of Supervisors, reappointment to the State Board of Equalization, Human Services 86, Agreement with Roars, Buckeye, Downtown Limited Partnership. The Board will now consider items 84 through 86. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve items 84, 85, and 86. Thank you, Supervisor Galvin. Do we have a second? Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Now we're going to recess as the Board of Supervisors and reconvene as the Flood Control District Board of Directors. We have 87 easement uh, right-of-way and relocation assistance documents. The board will now consider item 87. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of item number 87. Thank you, Supervisor Sellers. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Galvin. Motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. And now we'll adjourn as the Flood Control District Board of Directors and reconvene as the Board of Supervisors. Uh, so we're, we're now on to item 88, which is public comment. Uh, Madam Clerk, do you have anything to report about public comment or any responses that we've received? Chairman, Supervisors, we received a few uh, public comments via email, several regarding animal care and control, one regarding Superior Court judge, and one regarding Zenhero Trails development. All of these comments have been shared with all the board offices. We do have two speaker forms for in-person for public comment, and I will bring these to you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. We appreciate everyone that's provided both email comments to us and then also appearing here uh, in person today. So our first speaker, uh, two minutes on the clock, is uh, Diane Barker. Thanks for coming up again, Diane. Thank you, Chairman Gaten, Board of Supervisors. Diane Barker, I'm in District 5. And actually, I live that flag that's behind you. And the flag to me, I come from Ohio, I'm 13th generation American, and I say, you know, all that and $2 will get you a reduced uh, pass on the bus. Um, the thing about it is, is that I think that we have become politically divided. I'm sure all of you notice that. And I'm here to ask you to promote 
more stories, authentic. Let's not get like, you know, over Pollyanna. Um, in regards to Maricopa County, particularly, we're going to have an influx of a lot of visitors in here. I just wrote to a Canadian publisher that I saw, and you can see a lot of stuff on the internet, but they put Arizona as being one of the most unfriendly states, so I just wrote them a statement, and I says, Arizona welcomes you, okay? So there's no sense in fighting negativity only promoting the positive, and we're not only getting in the new year the Super Bowl, but we're getting Martin Luther King Day too, right around the same time. So it sounds to me, and it seems to me, that we have things to do, and that is to start telling the stories here at the county and so forth about the diversity and the way that we have moved forward, maybe from some problems that we have. We're always going to have, you know, human problems like that. But let's do it and go America, Maricopa County. Thank you very much, Diane. Appreciate the message. All right, our final speaker today for public comment is Blue Crowley. Blue. Appreciate the efforts you did, Jack, to get me documents that why they don't have it over there at the RPTA boggles the mind. But when I start reading it and seeing how many flaws and holes are in it, it's... Uh, what part of the infrastructure for the bus is going to be done? Oh, well, you don't have it in here, do you? Um, you know, I have a problem that uh, there is no bus book. And also, customer service is open when? Not when the system is operating totally. It's limited, eight to eight. So those are things that I think I, we need to get funded and such. And, when it hasn't here, the allocation is going to be done according to vehicle miles and actual boardings. Like I said, I need you to reestablish that uh, Wickenburg connector, in fact, started all the way over at the county line because those people have been paying this tax since 85. What do they have? And it's supposed to be a multimodal system. When is RPTA and Valley Metro Rail gonna understand that that new extension with five stops not having interaction with the bus, that's not an intermodal system. You only what, agreed for $30 million for them doing planning, 600,000 of it for the bus, and what did you get? Five stops that aren't being done. Now this has been brought to your attention how many times? Why hasn't the system started to do something, because I don't just say this here, I do it at their meeting too. I look at uh, all of the little parts of here like uh, that uh, MAG is going to decide where the parking rides are. Okay, well, so far what you've done is not. And I'd like to do 30 more seconds quickly to point out that okay, we, Blue, developed your time plan, is up. we developed the plan in 1989. You implemented it in 2004. So what you're doing now, we need to plan for now and the future. And just extending onto the super grid doesn't do that. You need to redo the super grid in all the different communities. Thanks Thank so much, Blue. Time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, now is the time when uh, we have comments from up here on the dais. I'll turn first to our county manager, Joy Rich. Nothing today, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much. Uh, next, Supervisor Sellers. Okay, I'll try to make this brief. We've, uh, again, we've been very busy. Uh, I attended a Arizona Mega Region Council meeting at the League of Cities and Towns Conference, and this is a very significant group in bringing together uh, elected and business leaders from both Sonora, Mexico and Arizona to talk about what we need to be doing to take advantage of this mega region for our economic future. Uh, also uh, attended uh, the GPEC International Leadership Council meeting and almost all the discussion at that meeting was centered around how important getting 
a Prop 400 extension is for our economic future here in Maricopa County. Uh, I attended the Intel Community Advisory Panel. We had a tour of the $20 billion expansion project going on on the Ocotillo campus in Chandler. And it just blows your mind to see in person what a $20 billion project looks like. I mean, we, we can't even, we can't visualize that. And even after seeing it, it's unreal. But uh, when you think about the fact that Intel is investing $20 billion and Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing is also in, investing at least $10 billion in this region, we have a lot of work to do to keep up with that growth. Uh, public health recognition, I was so honored that we all got to speak to them and uh, acknowledge what an outstanding job they did during this pandemic. Uh, what, a, what a great group of people, so self-sacrificing, and um, it was just an honor to be there with them. Um, Chandler Cham Chamber Public Policy Committee, I, along with Mayor Hartke and a representative from MAG, uh, talked about the importance of Prop 400E. Um, the GPAC mayors and supervisors uh, meeting that they held this week, uh, again, the, the main topic centered around how important Prop 400E is for our economic future. And they, they gave a lot of, uh, a very good update on what the political climate's gonna look like over the next couple of years and the challenges we face and, and talking about what we need to be doing to prepare for that. Uh, MAG Economic Development Committee meeting that uh, Supervisor Galvin serves on, I also gave some introductory remarks on their update for that group for Prop 400E uh, yesterday as well. So anyway, Busy times. All right, our update from the hardest working man in, in show business or politics, uh, Jack Sellers. Thank you, Supervisor Sellers, for all you do in the community. We'll switch it up and go with uh, Supervisor Galvin now. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, first of all, I wanna um, remark upon a young man who passed away in one of the county trails last week. And just to remind folks that no matter how old you are or how experienced you are in hiking, even if you're a native, to always just be careful um, make sure you have a line of communication with friends and family so they know where you're headed. And most of all, hydrate. Hydrate before you get to the hiking spot and hydrate and bring enough water when you get there. Um, been in communications with county staff this week. Um, the best we can do right now, right, is to raise awareness. So I'm very sorry about that. But just remind everyone to be vigilant and be safe because of the heat. Um, regarding Prop 400, it was an honor to sit with Supervisor Sellers yesterday at the MAG Economic Development Committee. This is such an important issue for Maricopa County from an economic development perspective and just from a transportation perspective. Very forceful comments by you, Jack, yesterday. And it's something that has gotten the attention of the business community and the wider community. And frankly, I'm just worried and concerned about the prospect of even people losing access to buses in District 2 um, if this funding runs out in just a short period of time. So something we're very concerned about and we're highlighting. And then finally, it took a tour of animal care and control last Friday, and I want to thank Director Michael Mandel and Deputy Director Crystal Enojos for hosting the tour. It was very eye-opening for me to see it, but I understand and I appreciate the dedication of the director and his entire staff. I also know a lot of folks on the outside have a lot of thoughts, and I've been hearing from them as well. But I encourage everyone to remember that we're all striving for the same thing, right? To make sure that these animals are taken care of in good condition, and then they're able to find homes and be adopted as soon as possible. But I do believe this is a well-run operation the facilities are clean, which is amazing because the shelter is either at capacity or sometimes at over capacity. We're doing everything we can to get the word out. Um, the community can adapt, uh, can help. More into the fall and we're starting to see more and more invites um, for folks to go out uh, with our table, kind of uh, sharing uh, all the information, the services and programs that Maricopa County has to offer and just be out there uh, networking with all the folks uh, in District 5. So. Uh, looking forward to the fall and football starting, baseball is starting, mm -hmm. fall season. I have my kids ready. Girls we're, softball. Oh, I don't do softball. <laughs> I only do baseball. But we're gear, we have practice tonight, so we're gearing up. But anyway, looking forward to the fall and uh, being right back out in the community. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Vice Chair Hickman. 
what you guys touched on uh, being able to talk to our public health group, and and I, I don't want to touch on that uh, too much, just because, you know, I heard a couple of us got a little bit emotional. So thank you to them. They continue to do a fantastic job, um, and there go here they go right into um, monkeypox, measles and uh, protecting our community and doing things. So thank you, uh, thank you to them. Um, I wanted to say uh, something, uh, trying to figure this uh, out how to say it, but in 2009, um, before I was involved in politics, um, I was heavily involved in the egg industry and, and, uh, and still am, but representing the egg industry. And uh, I decided for my family's sake, for our egg industry's sake, to uh, sign up and uh, reach out to uh, Micro and Dirty Jobs. And he came and did a, a show on um, our company, but also on our industry. And our industry was uh, absolutely, on the front end, was absolutely appalled that we would bring a news uh, crew out there to show everything we do. And you know, Dirty Jobs, agriculture, food products, uh, but when you believe strongly in something, you want people to see it. You want the public to see it, uh, and you definitely want uh, political leaders uh, to see things. So I'm bringing that up because this past week, um, Congresswoman Lesko uh, took us up on an invitation that, that Scott Isham, my chief, made, because we try to show the county in all its uh, endeavors, and because we believe strongly in uh, what the county does at, at all levels. And it started off with talking about elections that everybody wants to see. So she promised me she would come back uh, when her name's not on the ballot and come and see what McTech does and all the steps that the elections put together, the care and, uh, and uh, incredible professionalism that that group uh, wants to display uh, for people that are willing to see it. But um, because her name's not on this ballot, thankfully, um, she did come and take a look at the medical examiner's office. And so many people have no idea uh, how the medical examiner's office is touched uh, by the community and the community touches that. And we wanted to show her because she had questions about the fentanyl epidemic and the opioid uh, epidemic and quite possibly settlements, um, quite possibly federal laws and things. Dr. Johnston did an absolutely spectacular job of showing what they do. And it's spectacular because he got to talk about it, but she got to see it. And it was a busy day, unfortunately, uh, in, on the other side of those windows. And I got to witness people that work for the county, incredibly professional, incredibly caring. And I don't think they knew that there was a US Congresswoman there. It's just part of their job. So I want to thank um, Congresswoman uh, Lesko for coming out and seeing a portion of what the county does, a, a portion of what the county taxpayer pays for, and unfortunately, what the county taxpayer sometimes has to live through with what happens to their relatives. And uh, so thank her for that, and implore other Congress people to not just look at one part and have their opinion, but come and see how this county acts and how they do their jobs. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's good, thank you. I'll have to ask uh, Congressman Schweikert, since he was our county treasurer, if he ever got over there to look <laughs> at it. And if he doesn't, we should invite him over. Yeah. So appreciate you you doing that. Um, Let me ask Gozart, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask Gozart. Let me call him, he's my buddy. Excellent. He's my Excellent. buddy. Thank you. That's on your to-do list now. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, a lot, as you can hear, a lot going on in the county right now. Grateful to, to all my colleagues being all around the, the county. Um, but first of all, I, I wanted to welcome, we have a new member of the Maricopa County team with us, uh, Israel Kiogera 
is new with our government relations team, and I apologize if I mispronounce your last name. Welcome to the team. You've got a very important role, and we're grateful for all that you and, and, and all of your teammates And they were do. both there with Congressman Lesko, too, so okay, thank you there for we helping go. arrange that. Excellent. That's great. That's I expect you guys to be there when Mr. Gozar comes <laughs> as well, all right? <laughs> Uh, again, a lot has been said about the public health celebration. Appreciate all my colleagues being there. Wonderful time, really, for us to celebrate the incredible work of our folks in public health. It's just, and, and as the vice chair said, unfortunately, the challenges continue, monkeypox, measles, and others. Um, I have uh, my coffee chat. My next coffee chat is actually coming up tomorrow. Very pleased to be back in one of my old haunts, the uh, North Mountain Brewing Company. They're so kind, uh, my friends over there, to open the doors for us. And uh, we'll be having Jacqueline Edwards from Human Services. Uh, all of my constituents are concerned about what's being done in this particular area, but especially in Sunny Slope. Uh, unfortunately, as, I, as I've said many times, Sunny Slope has a very big heart and takes a lot of the challenges on as it relates to homeless and others. So we're looking forward to that update, and it'll be a good opportunity to, to see some friends there. So encourage everyone to come by. They do a nice breakfast in addition to what they have in the evenings at North Mountain. So it's very nice of them to open the doors for us. And then finally, wanted to make a, um, a special, just share something personally with everyone. Uh, my wife and I have been fortunate uh, to be part of a program this week here in Maricopa County where there's a few judges who are hosting uh, judges from the country of Kazakhstan. And so we actually have two judges who are, who've been staying with us this week and wonderful, wonderful folks, young judges from Kazakhstan. We've learned so much from them and, uh, and it's been a great opportunity. And so we have uh, Soprahan uh, Umarov and uh, Moxit Sadikov are staying with us. Moxit has a nickname, we call him Mad Max. And uh, so, and that was his other colleague from, from Kazakhstan gave him that name. But I want to wish happy birthday to Moxit. It is his birthday today. He's turning 39. He really is. It's not one of those, you know, <laughs> another 39th birthday. And we're celebrating by taking him to the Diamondbacks game this evening. So uh, looking forward to that. And I just want to thank everybody who's involved in this program. And I think it's so important, you know, the more that we can do to open our doors up here in Arizona, show how friendly we are. And they commented on that, by the way, how friendly Arizonans have been, the residents of Maricopa County. So I want to thank everybody involved in that, in that program. So thanks for everyone's time. Thanks for the great work of our Maricopa County employees. And we'll see you next time. This meeting is adjourned.